In this video, we will learn how to solve systems of polynomial equations. Let's start with number five. All right, notice that um, both of these functions equal y. If they both equal y, it makes sense that they are both going to equal each other. So I'm going to wind up setting these two equations equal to each other. I'm gonna do that off to the side. All right, so here I've taken the two equations all right, with the, uh, the x minus five and the x to the third power minus four x squared minus one, and I've set them equal to each other. Wait, I put x minus y, that should be x minus five. My bad. Okay, so they're equal to each other. Um, now I just need to solve this equation for x. So uh, I'm gonna get zero on one side by subtracting x from both sides and adding five to both sides. Okay, so that's gonna give me x to the third power minus four x squared uh, minus x, all right? These don't combine or anything, so I'm just gonna write minus x. Now, negative one and positive five make positive four and that will now equal zero. All right, so I still need to solve this thing. I'm looking and uh, it's possible that grouping would actually work on this problem. All right, I think it would. Um, so, you know, if you happen to notice that grouping would work and I'll tell you why, you know, I'm seeing it. Um, you see the four here and this is like a negative one and see I have a negative four here and I have a one. If I look at these two, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at the negative four and I'm looking at the one. If I do negative four divided by one, that's gonna give me negative four. Okay, if I do the same thing over here, I've got the four and I've got the negative one. So if I do four divided by negative one, Again, I get negative four. If you get the same thing both times, grouping would work. So I'm gonna do grouping real quick, but if you don't like grouping, then I'm gonna go back and do it just by synthetic division. So here's how grouping would work. Um, the GCF here is x squared. So I could pull out that common factor. That's going to leave behind x minus Four. Now over here, um, see this negative sign? I'm gonna treat it like it's a negative one. So I'm gonna bring out negative one and see what that leaves inside the parentheses. Well, that's gonna leave behind x minus four. Don't believe me? Do the distributive property. Negative one times x would be negative one x. Negative one times negative four would give you positive four back again. Now, because these parentheses are the same, um, the x minus four itself is a common factor. So I can pull out the GCF like I always do, and that's going to leave behind x squared minus one. All right, then I could go on from there uh, to factor x squared minus one. We'll factor as x plus one times x minus one because this is the difference of two squares. And I will bring down the x minus four. Okay, and I can go from there. But uh, I'm gonna go back now, and uh, if you're not comfortable with grouping, then I'm gonna show you the other way you could do it, using synthetic division. All right, because let's face it, grouping doesn't always work, so um, we need something that will work when grouping does not work. I could go to my TI30XS multi-view. I'm gonna type this in. Um, so I'm gonna come and I'm gonna hit the table button. I'm gonna clear out whatever's in there. And now I'm gonna type in the function. All right, so here I've typed in the function under the table function. Um, so I'm gonna hit enter. And I usually start at negative 10 because the zeros rarely go beyond negative 10. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down looking for zeros on the y side. 
All right, so there's one, all right? When I see this zero, that tells me that negative one is one of my solutions. Okay, so maybe I'll just make a little list here, zeros. Um, in fact, look, where I'm headed is uh, I'm going to need to have some sort of an XY chart. Okay, like a table of values. Maybe I'll just put it here. Okay, so, so far I found negative one, so I can just go ahead and put that on my chart. Uh, anything else? This is not a zero, by the way. Now here's another zero at positive one, so I could put that on my chart. Anything else? There's another zero at four. Okay, now look, this is a cubic function, degree three. Um, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, if the degree is three, there will be three zeros. Um, so I found all three zeros right here. So I know I'm all set. So these are my solutions. So um, I really, I don't need to even do synthetic division because I found them all. Um, now, Understand that when we're solving a system, we're looking for the points of intersection. Um, so this cubic function is a graph that looks maybe something like this, say. And uh, this second function is a linear function, maybe something like this. Okay, so we're looking for the points of intersection. Um, so what we have here are the x values of those points, but we also need the y values because we want ordered pairs. So um, we can use this equation right here. Getting too many marks everywhere. Um, we can use this equation to help us. All right, because y equals x minus 5. Okay, so that means y should equal, in this case, negative one minus five. That's negative six. And this should be one minus five, all right? I'm just doing x minus five, so one minus five. And that's negative four. And this one should equal four minus five. So that's negative one. So these uh, three points of intersection, like this, this, and this, are the points negative one comma negative six, 1 comma negative 4 and 4 comma negative 1. All right, these are the points of intersection. All right, now just for fun, let's um, use the Desmos app to um, graph these electronically and um, see what these functions actually looked like together. All right, so here I've typed in that first function, x to the third power minus 4x squared minus 1. Uh, you know, I guess I could put a y equals in front of it. Um, but anyway, that graph looks like this, all right, a cubic function. All right, very similar to what we were sort of guessing at when I just did my little sketch here. And then how about the y equals x minus 5? All right, so let's add that in. So y equals x minus 5. So as promised, that is a linear function that's cutting through. Okay, so taking a closer look. All right, we see the th uh, th three points of intersection. One is here, one is here, and one is here. So we have negative 1, negative 6, 1, negative 4, and 4, negative 1. All right, exactly what we came up with. All right, let's look at uh, one more system. All right, problem number six. All right, it looks like this. Now, again, these are both equal to y. So it makes sense that they will equal each other. Okay, so here I've set them equal to each other. Um, now, we need zero on one side to do all the things that we do. So 
I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides like this. So um, I'm just going to recopy here. So I'm going to have x to the fourth power plus 9x to the third power plus 28x squared plus 38x plus 24 equals 0. All right, I don't see any GCF or anything, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this in my calculator and see um, if I can find any zeros there. So you hit your table button, clear out any nonsense that you see. So I've got x to the fourth power plus 9x to the third power. So x to the fourth power plus 9x to the third power plus 28x squared plus 38x plus 24. All right, I always like to start at negative 10 when I'm looking for zeros. Okay, so I'm looking for zeros on the y side here. Okay, wow, there's two in a row. So negative 4 and negative 3. Okay, so I'm going to start my chart. All right, so far I've got negative 4 and I've got negative 3. Okay, I'm going to keep looking, see if I can find any more. Okay, I don't see any more. So um, let me use the two that I have because the degree is 4. That means there are two other zeros out there. Um, now, they might be decimals or they might be imaginary. If they're imaginary, um, they are not going to represent intersection points, you know, like the type that we found before. Um, so if they're imaginary, I'm going to ignore them. But I need to check and see to be sure. And on a test or something, you have to show that work. Even if you don't wind up using them, you have to show that you tried. So, um... Here I go, synthetic. So I will start with the negative 4. All right, I'm just using my first 0. And the coefficients, it's negative 4. I've got 1, 9, 28, 38, and 24. Okay, so 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. That's going to be 5. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. That's going to be 8. 8 times negative 4 is negative 32. That's going to be 6. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. And that's going to be 0. All right, now I'm going to pick up right from here and use the other 0 of negative 3. So here's my negative 3. All right, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. That's 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. That's 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and that is 0. So turning this back into a polynomial, um, this is going to give me x squared uh, plus 2x plus 2. All right, these are my coefficients. Um, so I would try to factor this first. x squared would be x times x. 2 can only be 2 times 1. Inner, I have 2x. Outer, I have 1x. Um, I'm trying to get a middle of 2x. There's no way to get 2 out of 2 and 1. I can either make 3 by adding or 1 by subtracting. So this is unfactorable, um, but I don't give up yet. Instead, I try the quadratic formula. All right, so remember the quadratic formula goes opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over to a. Now in this case, a is 1. You know, this is a. 
b is 2 and c is 2. But before we get too carried away, we always should calculate the discriminant first, the b squared minus 4ac part. Okay, if I do that, um, my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, so that's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2. 2 squared is 4, so this is 4. Um, 4 times 2 is 8. So it's 4 minus 8, which is negative 4. Now, as soon as I see that my discriminant is negative, that means I'm about to have a negative number under the radical. Uh, a negative number under the radical is imaginary. I'm going to get i. Um, and uh, imaginary solutions do not give you intersection points of lines. So we're going to stop with this part and just understand that my other solutions are imaginary, but um, we're just going to deal with the two non-imaginary, the two real solutions that we got and uh, forget about the imaginary ones. Okay, but I should see all this work on your paper if I'm grading a test or something. So let's go back to the, the real solutions um, and I have these x values, but I need to know the y values that go with them. Well, this is gonna be a little bit extra easy um, because the second equation simply says that y equals six. That means that both of these values will simply be six. So my two solutions are negative four comma six and negative three comma six. All right, one more time, let's take a peek at this system um, in the Desmos app and see what this looked like, this quartic polynomial and this line. All right, of course, this, this should be a horizontal line at six. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've typed in my two equations into the Desmos app. Here I am at the origin, um, but y equals six is way up high, so I'm gonna drag this graph down Okay, so here I see my function. All right, so this is the quartic function right here. And it gets a little, you know, it does more interesting things as it goes higher. Um, but down here, it almost looks like a parabola. Um, but here we have the, um, the y equals six cutting across this quartic graph. And you can see the intersection points are negative four comma six and negative three comma six. Uh, which is exactly what we got when we did it the long way. All right, that was number six.